Hello, welcome to Wethersfield Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian, and here is our library bear, Bear, all ready to read you a couple of stories about trying to trick elephants and what happens when you try that. Our first story is called Elmer and Snake, and this is by David McKee. Elmer and Snake. You can see that Elmer and Snake are a little bit unusual. They're both patchwork animals, aren't they? Elmer, the patchwork elephant, was thinking. He was thinking that it was a nice day for doing nothing. Nearby were two other elephants. Look, whispered one. Elmer is thinking of a trick to play on us. Let's play a trick on him instead. What shall we do? Asked the other elephant. I don't know. I can never think of tricks, said the first. But Snake will know. Off they went to see Snake. Hello, Snake, they said. We want to play a trick on Elmer. What can we do? Snake thought, then chuckled. Tell him he's looking pale. Get him to lie down and rest. He'll see that that's not true, said one of the elephants. Snake sniggered. If it's repeated often enough, he'll believe it. You'll see. The elephants weren't convinced, but they agreed to try Snake's idea because they didn't have any other. On the way home, they asked other animals to help them fool Elmer. Here are some other animals, right? Meanwhile, Snake snuck off and told Elmer the idea. Do as they say, Elmer, and lie down where you usually do, he said. I'll bring some white mud from the pool and rub you with it. It will make you look pale. They want to trick you, but we'll trick them. All right, Snake, said Elmer. I feel like lying down and doing nothing. I'll have a walk first. Soon after, Elmer met Leopard, who said, Are you feeling all right, Elmer? You look pale. Do I, said Elmer. Oh, dear. Then every animal that Elmer met said, Are you feeling all right, Elmer? You look pale. And Elmer said, Do I? Oh, dear. Well, Elmer returned to the other elephants. Snake was busy dragging a very large leaf toward Elmer's favorite lying down place. On the leaf was a pile of white mud. Oh, sorry, my finger's covering that up there. You see that? Here comes Elmer, the elephants whispered to each other. Then out loud they said, Are you feeling all right, Elmer? You look pale. You should lie down and rest. Elmer just nodded and went to his usual place. It's working, chuckled the elephants. Snake was ready and, using a smaller leaf, covered Elmer with a thin coat of mud. Elmer giggled. Stop, they'll notice, said Snake, then finished and hid. Elmer was left with his colors looking paler under the thin coat of mud. Hmm, so far the plan seems to be working. I'll go and peek at Elmer, said an elephant. Elmer was asleep. Being covered with mud is relaxing, especially when you feel like doing nothing. The elephant returned to the others. He's very quiet, he said, and he really does look pale. The elephants laughed. One said, Snake said that if we told Elmer often enough, he'd believe it. Now you're believing it too. Go and look again. While they were talking, Snake gently covered Elmer with more mud. Elmer slept on. The elephant found Elmer paler than ever and hurried away to get the others. 
Snake covered Elmer yet again, then hid as the elephants arrived. He's getting paler all the time, said the first elephant. What shall we do? We'll have to ask Snake, said another. Snake heard and hurried home. When the elephants arrived, Snake was waiting. He acted surprised. Believing you are ill can make you ill, he said. The way to cure Elmer is to tickle him. At first the elephants were shocked, but Snake convinced them, and they hurried away to try the cure. Elmer awoke, feeling strange. The mud had dried, making a stiff cover all over him. At the same time, the elephants tiptoed up and started to tickle him. Elmer laughed and jumped up, bursting out of his mud shell like a chick breaking out of an egg. His colors showed as brightly as ever. Hurrah! shouted the elephants. It worked! Snake was right! Elmer laughed. Snake? He's a crafty one. You thought you were tricking me. I thought I was tricking you, and Snake tricked all of us. It's Snake we should tickle. But Snake, being sensible, had gone on vacation. So the elephants tickled each other and anyone else that was around until the jungle rocked with the sound of laughter. Look at this, they all have feathers. <laughs> They're tickling each other. Well, I hope you enjoyed Elmer and Snake by David McKee. That's one idea of what can happen when you try to trick an elephant. And here's another idea of what can happen when you try to trick an elephant. This story is called The Elephant's Child. And this is from Just So Stories, written by Rudyard Kipling. And this version is illustrated by Tim Raglan. And these pictures are much paler than the vibrant colors of the other book. So it's not anything wrong with your screen. The Elephant's Child from Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling, illustrated by Tim Raglan. You may notice something a little bit different about this elephant. In the high and far off times, the elephant, O oh best beloved, had no trunk. He had only a blackish bulgy nose, as big as a boot, that he could wriggle about from side to side, but he couldn't pick up things with it. But there was one elephant, a new elephant, an elephant's child who was full of insatiable curiosity. And that means he asked ever so many questions. And he lived in Africa and filled Africa with his insatiable curiosities. He asked his tall aunt, the ostrich, why her tail feathers grew just so. And his tall aunt ostrich spanked him with her hard, hard claw. He asked his tall uncle, the giraffe, what made his skin spotty, and his tall uncle, the giraffe, spanked him with his hard, hard hoof, and still he was full of insatiable curiosity. He asked his broad aunt, the hippopotamus, why her eyes were red, and his broad aunt, the hippopotamus, spanked him with her broad, broad hoof, and he asked his hairy uncle, the baboon, why melons tasted just so, and his hairy uncle, the baboon spanked him with his hairy, hairy paw, and still he was full of insatiable curiosity. He asked questions about everything he saw or heard or felt or smelt or touched, and his uncles and aunts spanked him, and still he was full of insatiable curiosity. One morning, in the middle of the procession of the equinoxes, this insatiable elephant's child asked a new fine question that he had never asked before. He asked, what does the crocodile have for dinner? Then everybody said, hush, in a loud and dreadful tone. And then they spanked him immediately and directly without stopping for a long time. By and by, when that was finished, he came upon a colo colo bird sitting in the middle of a wait a bit thorn bush and said, my father has spanked me and my mother has spanked me and all my aunts and uncles have spanked me for my insatiable curiosity and I still want to know what the crocodile has for dinner. Then the colo colo bird said with a mournful cry, 
go to the banks of the great gray green greasy Limpopo River all set about with fever trees and find out. That very next morning, when there was nothing left of the equinoxes because the precession had proceeded according to precedent, this insatiable elephant's child took a hundred pounds of bananas, the little short red kind, and a hundred pounds of sugar cane, the long purple kind, and seventeen melons, the green crackly kind, and said to all his dear families, Goodbye, I am going to the great gray green greasy Limpopo River, all sit about with fever trees to find out what the crocodile has for dinner. And they all spanked him once more for good luck, though he asked them most politely to stop. Then he went away, a little warm, but not at all astonished, eating melons and throwing the rind about because he could not pick it up. And there he is with his stack of melons and sugarcane and bananas. He went from Grahamstown to Kimberley and from Kimberley to Kama country and from Kama country he went east by north eating melons all the time till at last he came to the banks of the great gray green greasy Limpopo River all set about with fever trees precisely as the Colo Colo bird had said. Now you must know and understand, O oh best beloved, that till this very week and day and hour and minute this insatiable elephant's child had never seen a crocodile and did not know what one was like. That was all his insatiable curiosity. The first thing that he found was a bicolored rock snake, bicolored python rock snake curled round a rock. Excuse me, said the elephant's child most politely, but have you seen such a thing as a crocodile in these promiscuous parts? I seen a crocodile, said the bicolored python rock snake in a voice of dreadful scorn. What will you ask me next? Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but could you kindly tell me what he has for dinner? I wonder if you know what's coming. <laughs> then the bicolored python rock snake uncoiled himself very quickly from the rock and spanked the elephant's child with a scalesome flailsome tail. That is odd, said the elephant's child, because my mother, my father and my mother and my uncle and my aunt and not to mention my other aunt, the hippopotamus, and my other uncle, the baboon, have all spanked me for my insatiable curiosity, and I suppose this is the same thing. So he said goodbye very politely to the bicolored python rock snake and helped to coil him up on the rock again and went on, a little warm, but not at all astonished, eating melons and throwing the rind about because he could not pick it up till he trod on what he thought was a log of wood at the very edge of the great gray green greasy Limpopo River all set about with fever trees. But it was really the crocodile, O oh best beloved, and the crocodile winked one eye like this. Excuse me, said the elephant's child most politely, but do you happen to have seen a crocodile in these promiscuous parts? Then the crocodile winked the other eye and lifted half his tail out of the mud and the elephant's child stepped back most politely because he did not wish to be spanked again. Come hither, little one, said the crocodile. Why do you ask such things? Excuse me, said the elephant's child most politely, but my father has spanked me, my mother has spanked me, not to mention my tall aunt the ostrich and my tall uncle the giraffe who can kick so hard, as well as my broad aunt the hippopotamus and my hairy uncle the baboon, and including the bicolored python rock snake, with a scalesome flailsome tail just up the bank who spanks harder than any of them. And if so, if it's quite all the same to you, I don't want to be spanked again. Come hither, little one, said the crocodile, for I am the crocodile. And he wept crocodile tears to show it was quite true. Then the elephant's child grew all breathless and panted and kneeled down on the bank and said, you are the very person I've been looking for all these long days. Will you please tell me what you have for dinner? Come hither, little one, said the crocodile, and I'll whisper. Then the elephant's child put his head down close to the crocodile's musky, tusky mouth, and the crocodile caught him by his little nose, which up to that very weekday hour and minute had been no bigger than a boot, though much more useful. I think, said the crocodile, and he said it between his teeth like this, I think today I will begin with the elephant's child. At this, O oh best beloved, the elephant's child was much annoyed, and he said, speaking through his nose like this, Let go, let go, you're hurting me. Then 
the bicolored python rock snake scuffled down from the bank and said, my young friend, if you do not now immediately and instantly pull as hard as ever you can, it is my opinion that your acquaintance in the large pattern leather ulster, and by this he meant the crocodile, will jerk you yonder into limpid stream before you can say Jack Robinson. This is the way bicolored python rock snakes always talk. Then the elephant's child sat back on his little haunches and pulled and pulled and pulled, and his nose began to stretch. And the crocodile floundered into the water, making it all creamy with great sweeps of his tail, and he pulled and pulled and pulled. And the elephant child's nose kept on stretching, and the elephant's child spread all his little four legs and pulled and pulled and pulled, and his nose kept on stretching, and the crocodile threshed his tail like an oar, and he pulled and pulled and pulled. And at each pull, the elephant, child, elephant child's nose grew longer and longer until it hurt him. Then the elephant's child felt his legs slipping, and he said through his nose, which was now nearly five feet long, this is too much for B. Then the bicolored python rock snake came down from the bank and knotted himself into a double clove hitch around the elephant child's hind legs and said, rash and inexperienced traveler, we will now seriously devote ourselves to a little high tension because if we do not, it is my impression that yonder self-propelling man of war with armor-plated upper deck, and by this, O oh best beloved, he meant the crocodile, will permanently vitiate your future career. This is the way that all bicolored python rock snakes always talk. So he pulled, and the elephant's child pulled, and the great crocodile pulled, and the elephant's child and the bicolored python rock snake pulled hardest, and at last, crocodile let go of the elephant child's nose <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> with a plop that you could hear all up and down the limpopo this is a long story my throat got dry <coughs> then the elephant's child sat down most hard and sudden but first he was careful to say thank you to the bicolored python rock snake and next he was kind to his poor pulled nose and wrapped it all up in cool banana leaves and hung it in the great gray green greasy limpopo to cool what are you doing that for? said the bicolored python rock snake. Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but my nose is badly out of shape, and I'm waiting for it to shrink. Then you'll have to wait for a long time, said the bicolored python rock snake. Some people do not know what is good for them. The elephant's child sat there for three days waiting for his nose to shrink, but it never grew any shorter, and besides it made him squint. For, oh, best beloved, you will see and understand, the crocodile had pulled it out into a really, truly trunk, same as all elephants have today. At the end of the third day, a fly came and stung him on the shoulder, and before he knew what he was doing, he lifted up his trunk and hit that fly dead with the end of it. Vantage number one, said the bicolored python rock snake. You couldn't have done that with a mere smear nose. Try and eat a little now. Before he saw what he was doing, the elephant's child pulled out put out his trunk, and plucked a large bundle of grass, dusted it clean against his forelegs, and stuffed it into his own mouth. Vantage number two, said the bicolored python rock snake. You couldn't have done that with your mere smear nose. Don't you think the sun is very hot here? It is, said the elephant's child, and before he thought what he was doing, he slooped up a sloop of mud from the banks of the great gray-green greasy limpopo and slapped it on his head, where it made a cool, sloopy, sloshy mud cap all trickly behind the ears. Vantage number three, said the bicolored python rock snake. You couldn't have done that with a mere smear nose. Now, how do you feel about being spanked again? Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but I should not like it at all. How would you like to spank somebody, said the bicolored python rock snake. I should like it very much indeed, said the elephant's child. Well, said the bicolored python rock snake, you will find that new nose of yours very useful to spank people with. Thank you, said the elephant's child. I'll remember that, and now I think I'll go home to all my dear families and try. So the elephant's child went home across Africa, frisking and whisking his trunk. When he wanted fruit to eat, he pulled fruit down from a tree, instead of waiting for it to fall, as he used to do. When he wanted grass, he plucked grass up from the ground, instead of going on his knees, as he used to. When flies bit him, he broke off a branch of a tree and used it as a fly whisk, and he made himself a new cool new cool blushy, squishy mudcap whenever the sun was hot. When he felt lonely walking through Africa, he sang to himself down his trunk, and the noise was louder than several brass bands. He went especially out of his way to find a broad hippopotamus. She was no relation of his, and he spanked her very hard to make sure that the bicolored python rock snake had spoken the truth about his new trunk. The rest of the time he picked up the melon rinds that he had dropped on his way to the Limpopo, 
for he was a tidy pachyderm. One dark evening, he came back to all his dear families, and he coiled up his trunk and said, How do you do? They were very glad to see him, immediately said, Come here and be spanked for your insatiable curiosity. Pooh, said the elephant's child. I don't think you peoples know anything about spanking, but I do, and I'll show you. Then he uncurled his trunk and knocked two of his dear brothers head over heels. Bananas, they said. Where did you learn that trick, and what have you done to your nose? I got a new one from the crocodile on the banks of the great gray green greasy Limpopo River, said the elephant's child. I asked him what he had for dinner, and he gave me this to keep. Looks very ugly, said his hairy uncle, the baboon. It does, said the elephant's child, but it's very useful. And he picked up his hairy uncle, the baboon, by one hairy leg and hove him into a hornet's nest. Then the elef that bad elephant's child spanked all his dear families for a long time till they were very warm and greatly astonished. He pulled out his ostrich aunt's tail feathers and he caught his tall uncle the giraffe by the hind leg and dragged him through a thorn bush and he shouted at his broad aunt the hippopotamus and blew bubbles into her ear when she was sleeping in the water after meals. But he never let anyone touch the colo colo bird. At last, things grew so exciting that his dear families went off one by one in a hurry to the banks of the great great green greasy Limpopo River all set about with fever trees to borrow new noses from the crocodile. When they came back, nobody spanked anybody anymore. And ever since that day, O oh best beloved, all the elephants you will see, besides all those that you won't, have trunks precisely like the trunk of the insatiable elephant's child. Well, I hope you enjoyed The Crocodile Trying to Trick the Elephant's Child. From Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling, illustrated by Tim Raglan. We're going to say goodbye from Weather Show Proctor Library. We'll see you again another day.